if you've built your jam jar pulse jet properly, it should run a little something like this. But I'm guessing that, being that you're here, you might be having some issues. Well, I'm going to go through a few things that are probably causing this for you. By far the most common of which is the wrong hole size. I'm going to show you exactly what that does here right now. The correct hole size for most jam jar pulse jets is half an inch. Now, obviously this isn't going to be correct for every single container, but most of your jam jar size containers, this is going to be a great starting place. You should have no issues getting your pulse jets running the exact same way that I just did. If you're, if you're using the right fuel and you've got the right hole size. So always start off with half an inch and only change that if you're having issues getting to this point. Now, if you drill your hole way too big, like so, let's see how this runs, if at all. Burn them more like a candle. Let's try that one more time, see if we can get anything. No. You can see it is on fire. But you won't get that pulse jetting effect with a hole that's way too big. The next most common mistake, a hole size that's too small. This one's 21 64ths. I've got my safety glasses on today. I don't know if you saw, I got my safety glasses on. I'm gonna be starting this at a distance because there is a possibility that it could shatter. It's, uh, I'm only doing this just to show you guys what can happen. It's a uh, very bad idea to go too small on your hole size. That's what happens. Pretty violent, right? You don't want to do that. This is 23 64ths, still too small, but bigger than what I just did. This may actually run for a second or two. I'm still going to keep my distance when I fire it up, however, because uh, it's still quite a bit too small. Let's see how this runs. Yeah, still pretty aggressive. Notable difference, I don't know if you could tell in the video or not, it is getting there. We're gonna go up another hole size, but still smaller than half an inch, and we'll see how that runs. Okay, we are now at three eighths. Three eighths actually, for some pulse jets, in some conditions, ends up being the correct hole size, but it is still gonna be definitely too small for this one. Let's see if we can't get it to run though. Yeah, so still no. Ah, there we go. If your hole size is too small, you're either going to get that violent pop or something like that, where it almost wants to run, but it just doesn't quite. Come on. There. So that's pretty characteristic. That loud, violent pop, that whoosh, and then it runs for about a second and goes out. A lot of people that I've talked to that have issues getting this experiment to work, that's what they get. If that's what you're getting, go a little bit bigger on your hole size. In this case, it was 3 eighths. I'd go right to half inch. If you do have drill bits that are in between, you might want to, 
you know, maybe go up a size at a time. It is possible that you end up dialing in a little under half inch. For me, with my drill bit set, I jump right from three eighths right to half inch. Um, so yeah, whatever you have access to. This lid is drilled to half inch, but as you can see, it's seen a lot of use. The seal is completely burnt off. Let's see what happens when I use this one. Here's it next to a very similar lid. See that red seal? Totally missing. That was about what I expected. One thing that you'll find when the seals are burnt off, you'll get like a ring of fire that builds up around there. That's because when you shake it up, there's nothing to seal the methanol from coming out. It'll start leaking out around. If I was to maybe use an air, air nozzle to stir it up, it actually might work somewhat but then the air leaking in when it's running is going to reduce its performance. If, uh, yeah, unfortunately, if the seal is burnt off, you may as well just throw that lid away. Here's another big one. I've often been asked, what is the ideal dimensions for a jam jar jet engine? Really, I've gotten a lot of different wonky sizes to work, but the easiest ones is when the width is roughly half the height. This one falls pretty damn close to being ideal dimensions. It doesn't have to be exact, but if you're close to the height being double the width, it's probably gonna be ideal, unless the shape of the container is really, really odd. Now you can see with this one, there it is. We're about three to one. Now, I actually can get this thing to work because I've got the whole size right and I'm using the right fuel and everything like that. Um, it is really finicky, though. I don't know if it'll work right now. We are going to try. But it's certainly not ideal. Let's see. There. Runs for... Damn, okay. Runs for a few seconds. Doesn't want to sustain like the other ones do. Uh, that's because, yeah, the shape of the container is not ideal. It's just really hard to get the um, all of the variables right to actually get this to run for a long period of time. Uh, enough tinkering, you actually probably could. And I have had that thing run for longer than that. Not much, though. But, you know, maybe five to ten seconds max. Um, I actually have gotten this to run, believe it or not, as a pulse jet floating on the water. Um, and I've gotten it to run for a long time, but it also is a finicky little bitch. And it could take me, you know, a half an hour of fucking around to get it to run for, you know, 30 seconds. But it, it eventually, persistence is key. Let's put it that way. The next one on the hit list, and I've had a lot of people ask this question. What fuel do I use? I use methyl hydrate, methanol, methylated spirits, depending on where you live. There's a bunch of different names, but it's just methyl alcohol, methanol. You can use acetone. You can use gasoline. You can use, like I say, just about anything. You can use combinations of all kinds of different shit. Methanol is by far the easiest to get to work well, let's see if we can get it to run on acetone, and we'll see what the results end up being. Okay. It is now filled with acetone. Well, filled. 
The bottom is covered with acetone. We're gonna try a run with acetone to see if we can get it to work. Does not want to work. No, it just burns like a candle. I'm going to try something to see if we can get it to work. I'm going to switch to that smaller hole size that we had earlier. In theory, it should at least run better with that one. Okay. Let's try. No, we just end up with a big, big candle. You probably could continue to go to smaller hole sizes and possibly get it to run. Instead, what I'm gonna try here, I'm gonna keep that acetone in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of methanol. We'll see if we can get it to run with the mixture. Acetone, methanol mixture, it's about 50-50. I'd have to do a lot of experimenting with that acetone to get it to work with one of these. I actually have run a jam, uh, I, I'm actually not gonna call it a jam jar jet. I've called one of my, uh, I, I've run acetone in one of my pulse jets before. It was a metal one. You know, call it what you want. Um, it did actually work. Now it wasn't 100% acetone though. It was actually a mixture of methanol, gasoline, and acetone. I think it was like, I want to say six parts methanol, one part acetone and gasoline each. Uh, and it did run really, really well. Uh, but in one of these jam jars, it, it's not even really worth screwing around with acetone if you don't need to. Uh, I would recommend sticking with the methanol. All right, one last thing. This is filled with methanol again, some nice fresh stuff. I'm going to get it to run for... A few seconds, I, I don't want it to explode, but I'm gonna need to run for a few seconds. We're gonna cut it out. I'll show you the other more common thing that happens. Okay. If you're trying to start one of these jam jar pulse jets and it runs for a couple seconds, you have to put fresh air in it. The air that's inside now is spent. It's going to be mostly CO2. Even if I shake it up and don't blow more air in. See? Get a slight fire on top. But it's not going to run properly. I find, unless you have compressed air handy, the best thing is to just take the lid off. Blow some fresh air into it. And try again. Of course, this one's being finicky now, but you get the point. It did want to run there for a second. Well, there you have it. Follow these tips, and before you know it, you'll be running successful pulse jets to impress your friends in no time.
and be said V twin. Thanks for watching.